Be right now. All right, give me a second. Let it. Okay. No, you can do it. This is a new Carlisle City Council meeting of June 19th, 2017, at 7 o'clock p.m. Take the roll call, please. Vice Mayor Craybacher? Here. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Lindsay? Here. Mr. Lighty? Here. Mr. Lethley? Here. Uh, five members present. Okay. Can we please stand? We have the invocation by Bill Lindsay. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this evening. We thank you for all the blessings you give this, this city, state, and our country. Father, we ask you to keep a couple hand on our police departments throughout the country and our firefighters, Lord. We ask you that this meeting become so and bless each and every one of us that's in this room today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Glad we use the flag back. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tradition, if you have a cell phone, either turn it off or tone it down to, to so we don't hear. It. Okay, we need action on the minutes. Mr. Vice Mayor. Yes. I move that we accept the minutes. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Lethley and a second by Mr. Reynolds. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Do we have something to say? No. Yeah. Oh, okay. No. Who, who did the second? I'm sorry. Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds. Reynolds. Okay. Ethan. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Lighting. Yes. Mr. Lethley. Yes. Vice Mayor Craybacher. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Minutes past five to zero. And I will say that's really hard to say Vice Mayor <laughs> Craybacher when I haven't said. What about that? acting mayor? Acting. Yeah, yeah I, I can pretend. <laughs> Pretending I mayor. I don't want to go to his head. So I want to <laughs> say Vice Mayor Craybacher. Okay. There's no communications tonight. Randy. None this evening. Okay. Um, the man manager report. Yep. Uh, thank you.
council meeting. That way we can do a comparison as to how they're doing and where we're at on collection. Somebody to entertain any questions? Ethan? I have a quick question, Mr. Harris. This is just one quick one. Do we have like an online system for our employees to clock in and clock out? I see that we have time cards for our employees. I mean, that seems kind of archaic to me. We, we don't have right now in place online okay. time cards. We do have the, the manual time cards. Okay. Most of that um, expense was for the fire department. Okay. They also have manual time cards. All right. Well, I was just wondering. I was like, oh, wow, I haven't seen this before. Like, I've seen it before, but I was like, oh, I should ask that question. We should upgrade them. So that means we can get approval to get like electronic clock in. You know me, I don't like to spend money unless it's needed, so I'd, I'd, be, I'd be for that. Would it be efficient, though? It would be. Yeah. It would be. Yeah. Number of well, I think it'd be That's what we have at oh, my yeah. office. It's so great. So I remember going in and then like, like sticking an ad, wait, pulling it out, putting it in the thing. Now I just go on my yeah, computer, yeah. type it in, and go. Right. And I'm sure a report is just hit a button and yep. does everything yeah. for you. Exactly, so it's cost savings. Yep. Absolutely. But I was just wondering, that's my only question, Sarah. We're a lot of software. What did you say? Oh, Lord. And employees can't cheat when they're late because they have a question. Jim, Mr. Harris, on, uh, on expenses, um, on the check register, I, I guess, like on page two, RD holder, it shows a roughly $12,000 tax return, or is that a... It's an incentive that was put in place when they moved down to their new building um, and they get a percentage back of their employee payroll for oh, incentive okay, okay. to move into okay. the city limits. Yeah, was it, what, what, how many years was it, 10 years? Uh, I think seven or 10. Okay. I remember I was advocating for 10. Years. Tim was advocating for five. I think we settled somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I think it's seven years. <laughs> I, I, forgive me, I don't know the percentage off the top of my head. Okay, so it's a tax rebate back exactly. for that. Okay. okay. I just didn't compute in my head, why are we paying an oil guy tax for the tax payment? <laughs> What's going down? Uh, then, then the other question I have, I, I noticed like month after month after month, our electric bill is $12,000 a month. For what? We have, <laughs> we have multiple accounts, so there are everything from the meters in the park to all our city buildings to the, the equipment at this uh, wastewater plant. That one's, that one's about 9000 a month alone. Uh, That's the big one, the uh, water plant. The station. So um, when you start adding the, the garages and all the, the, the buildings, they don't, sometimes I'll pay them a couple times. It depends on when the bills come in. They come in each location. I think obviously the water and the pool would be a big one. Obviously, it just it just almost, you see that and you think twelve thousand for lights. You know, okay. Thank you. Big machines running over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Everybody else. Thank you. No. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. And moving on with the report, uh, Mr. Kiko is out for a personal day today, so his report is attached. Um, if council wants to uh, ask any questions. I can definitely get them back. Um, I did review the report, so uh, if you have any direct questions, I may be able to answer them. Uh, but if not, we can uh, put the questions on in the Mr. Kiko and we can have a response back to this I, I do have one sure. question on it as well. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to take over the conversation here, but uh, the water department is going to replace four fire hydrants in the view. Are those four hydrants that are now not working or ones that just are being replaced that are now functional? Uh, I know um, there, there are probably ones that are a mixture of both. I do know we have some that are not working, right. but also just some that are old. Um, we, I will clarify that with Mr. Okay. Kiko. And we'll definitely I know there have been a couple of people that have mentioned some things about non-working okay. hydrants in their areas. And, just, and when I you, Mr. Kiko the email, what I'll do is copy council into it so you can respond. Okay. Is everyone okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Bill has a question for me. Uh, also, on the fire hydrants, uh, Mr. Bridge, we, can you uh, ascertain from Howie, Mr. Kiko, a uh, timeline when those would be replaced? And also the location of the four? Absolutely. I have, I have heard rumors, I don't you know how rumors are, that the one on the corner of uh, Henry and Vela, kind of 301 Vela, I think it is, I've heard that one does not work. So, uh, you said 301 Villa? 301 Villa. Maybe the chief would have some something to know something 301 about. Villa, the hybrid there is the one of the older hybrids that yeah. was uh, mm -hmm. on the old line that was, that was uh, 
shut down, that hydrant's still there, but it's not allowed to pull hydrant. There's no water to it, or? Okay, that brings another question. Who's that going to be? We have one right across from it. That's right around the corner from my house, down the street. We have another hydrant. Three of us are really concerned about that. We have another hydrant that's close enough to reach your hook. If you look, if you go through the city, you will see other hydrants. and they went to the new system, those hydrants were left in place. But we know as far as fire coming by the good hydrants, water bad. And especially if you see a hydrant with a black bonnet, we know it's a good hydrant. It is a good one. Okay. Black that's ones are good. good. That's good. Black. It's got black. Top and, it's and that means what? It's dead. It's dead. Thank you. Oh, that's what I didn't understand. As long as someone hasn't been out there and painted on the comes of colors again for it. Somebody has. <laughs> so they, th those will never be live? No. Then why not take them out? I, that's, that's not your department. Is that's it? not my department. No, no, okay. That's probably what he's doing. Overall, I mean, our fire hydrants. Overall, our hydrants were what, what we've done in the past two years is the fire department has done the flushing of the hydrants mm -hmm. uh, because it's easier for us to get out there. And it's also, it's, for my people, it's area of organization. And I'm from a little bit of hands on to know what it is. Uh, in the past few years, the flushing has went real well. We've found a few hydrants that might have been more hard will slow the drain and uh, Mr. Pico is taking care of that for us. We work really closely with the water department as far as taking care of all of that. Okay. Matter of fact, the new hydrants that, that they're purchasing, we also put in money to where the steamer connection will not be a threaded connection, it'll be a storage connection. <coughs> Take our five inch hose and snap the block on it. Cool. Okay, I've seen this. Uh, Ethan. I have a quick question. Uh, for the construction, the road construction projects, mm -hmm. is this going to be a chip and seal? Is this going to be an overlay? Are we talking about the various street projects? Yes. It's going to be similar to what we did on Edwin. We'll shave off a little bit and then re just overlay. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Just making sure. Yep. And the good news for that is came in a little lower, so we'd like to get a little more done. Good. Yep. Good. Because the only reason I asked that is someone was talking about it and uh, on Willowick, and they said, quote, that it's going to be a chip and seal. And I was like, are you kidding me? Which is what they do with like, the townships where they spray gravel down and yeah, stuff. Yeah. I was like, oh, man. I was like, can I reverse my vote? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you can't. Bill, Bill has another question. I had a follow-up question for Mr. Bridge or the chief on the fire hydrants, the dead ones. What's the probability of those ever being reactivated? I have a little note here that says get a hydrant report. Mr. Kiko, so once I have that report, There'd be another question will, for him. I will pass it on. Because okay. I, I want to know the current state of our fire argument just as much as everyone else really does. All right, right. thank you. Yep. That's good. Did you want anybody else? Okay, thank you. We're good. All right, and moving on with the city manager report, our fire discussion with our fire chief, Chief Trustee. Good evening. Um, for the month of May, the New Palau Fire Division responded to 74 EMS calls in the city, 80 EMS calls in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to two fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. We had three EMS calls answered by mutual aid, either by Pike or Bethel Clark, due to Medic 52 being on response. We answered two mutual aid EMS calls to Pike Township and two to Bethel Clark. In the month of May, the division responded to four overdose calls, one, uh, one related to a DOA. Uh, Assistant Chief Geiserman has taught three CPR classes in May uh, to 15 different personnel. The big thing this month for us is we received four Marks Radio Mobile units, which will go in vehicles, and eight handheld Marks radios at no cost to the division. We've got those as free. They're older radios, but uh, still work, and that will help us to meet our goal of trying to get onto the Mark system by the end of the year, first of the next year. Uh, the division also received a $10,000 SCBA grant from the state that allows, is going to allow us to put every firefighter in their own personal face piece, which was one of my goals as chief when I, when I took over, was to get all of our firefighters in their own face piece. Uh, we also received a $3,000 fire prevention grant from the Eagles Association, the state Eagles of the, uh, Eagles Association. We had already received a $3,200, over $3,200 EMS grant from the state, uh, which brings the division to over $16,000 worth of grant money so far this year. Uh, also, a quick end note that I just got the time and date for this, this evening. On June 28th at 7 o'clock at the Old Madison School, we will be doing auto electrification and anyone from the council staff, anyone from the public is more than invited to come and watch and if you want to get your hands on the tool and see what it actually feels like, how heavy they are, and how much work they are. 
already built the Terra Car open more than a month ago today. Chief, did you say it was an auto extraction? I'm sorry. Auto extrication. <coughs> extrication. I'm out of school. Yes, sir. Yes. I'll put that on Facebook. Does anybody have any questions? Seven o'clock. Okay. I don't know. Do you I know all the line up here. You're using that as well. Yeah. You're using the dolls, the cutters, the rams, that type of thing. Now, Council Member uh, Rowles has a question. Uh, just not more of a comment. Uh, I think it's fantastic to see us, uh, you know, answering those mutual aids for Bethel and, and Pike. Considering when you took over, we had and this is. I went back to the minutes, by the way, uh, and I found it that when Brad was here, well, Deputy uh, Chief Phillips was here, it was actually we had in August we had one month of ten mutual aids into New Carlisle, and now we're actually providing people with mutual aid, which is amazing. And then obviously the grants you're doing is fantastic, and I look forward to June 28th because I went with you guys last year and did the fire training and climbing up the ladder truck, which scared me to death because I hate heights, but I can't cut a car with it. I'm going to that. But then they tell you they're going to put you in the car. Yeah. yeah. They want to save me. That's all right. I want to, I want to know they can do it. You are the extrication. <laughs> they didn't tell you that? No, well, hey, I'm up for that. I climbed up the ladder and I was like, they were like, come back out the window onto the ladder. I was like, I'm good. I'll go down the steps. Hey, well, I have one question for you, Chief. Um, tonight we're going to be voting on for the March radio. And one of, one of the things is the cost it takes per month, you know, to operate those, you know, and it, some other expenses too. Does some of your grant money go go to those? No, we would have to apply. We would have to apply for the March grant, radio grants, which we do each year. Um, but after going to the state fire chiefs conference two years ago, we were we were told basically the only ones that were going to receive the March radio grants were. If they had a one or two departments that, if they gave the March grant to them, it would make that county whole for a March, uh, March County. If not, then they're probably not going to get the grant. Okay. Um, we can also then for the March Ready Equipment Grant, which allows us to buy. If you are, you're already on the March system, it gives you the lot to be able to buy, it, like, like the handheld speaker mics and that type of thing. Um, because we usually buy the radios, just one, like I said before, one March this radio is valued in between five and six thousand right. dollars, and the speaker marks were two hundred dollars. Okay. So that we can apply for those type of grants. But where you want to? If I can remember correctly, I think in the minutes before last, I estimated based on the figures that Chief Trustee had given us that the city saved with, with between eight oh, yeah. to a hundred thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. To buy those radios. Yeah, it's and a wonderful deal. Amazing. No doubt. These were from the. That's correct. These, these are the ones that I'm talking about that we received from the are not. Oh, they're, uh, they're these, the these we had to buy. Yeah. I was able to buy five of these for 13000 yeah. uh, The other ones are natural resources. Yeah, natural resources. These are actually free radios. They're, what it is, is they're, they're an older model of the Mark system, and but they still work fine. I've already had them uh, assessed by PNR Communications for their viability. And they kind of told us that we got the best ones out of the bunch. Yeah, they can't be that old because I was in my second year on council when we voted to switch over to the system to the federal land. Right. It, it was so basically they're the, they're the, the not first version of Mark's radios, but they're still it's very good. capable, good. very, you know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. They're actually, you know, good systems. Good. Mm -hmm. For you. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, it goes a lot of them. Oh, yeah. uh, <coughs> Chief, <coughs> Excuse me, the new Marks radios, when they get up and running, you say you hope by the end of the year, so end of December 31st, uh, will that also give you capability to talk to the Sheriff's Department or not? What to we're, the, we're, to what the we're going to do is we're going to look at hopefully of taking three of the radios, the, or three of the handheld and the mobile unit that's in the battalion vehicle that will have communications with the uh, deputies to be able to talk and receive and possibly look at the other radios only being able to receive. Um, but we're trying, we want to look at doing that. That, that takes coordination between us and also the Sheriff's Department, them okaying us, and the Sheriff saying, yes, it's okay for you to be on my frequency, uh, and for us to be able to have that communication. But I, I don't look to see there to be a problem. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Lynette? Sure, if I might uh, ask a question. When I'm at the meetings, which isn't all the time, but lately I've been out, I've noticed a trend in the um, uh, chief, uh, uh, fire chief and uh, police chief's uh, reports with overdoses. Um, they're steady, mm -hmm. and they're on both reports, and it's not uncommon to see a zero. Um, and I'm wondering what the age span is for those overdose and if they're typically related to heroin. Um, we're seeing anywhere from ages of early 20s to, to 40s. You've got a couple in the, up in the upper 50s and 60s. Um, initially, yes, they do the business. They were to the, due to the heroin. Um, the past <coughs> the one, the one that we had last month, found out that the patient was had cocaine and fentanyl on board. Um, so it's, you know, what, whatever's coming down the pike at that time, what the most, and like Sergeant was saying, other people were saying, um, if a dealer is selling and the person almost dies or dies from it, that's who the next person's going to go buy from, because they got the best stuff. I'm just wondering if the community being uh rather small, and this to me is a, a rather steady stream um, with the community size. If, if we wouldn't um, be successful if the two departments work together perhaps to try to procure some funding for some community outreach uh, programs uh, to try to raise awareness to try to lower the numbers. Well, I know there's been um FYI has tried to do what they call a task team, you know, but that kind of fell apart. Midway Methodists, mm -hmm. Bill was part of that. Yeah, you know, and Midway Methodists have been trying to do it, and Carol and I, you know, uh, talked with FYI on um, what well, used to be every other Wednesday, and that's the big subject. You know, how can we? generate enough interest. When 9-11 happened, people got all excited, you know, and they got the flags out and they got, and they said, yay, you know, we're gonna go ahead and go over there and we're gonna get, you know, Saddam Hussein or whoever it was, I know whatever. But when this happens at your back door, you know, what do you do? Uh, Aaron told me a story two weeks ago now. Do you, you want to repeat that? Which one? Yeah. The, the one with the backpack. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was on a business trip, and uh, my wife called me at midnight. And there was a guy who kept knocking at the door with a beer in his hand. And uh, we had two doors. My wife opened up. Just one of the doors kind of poked out. They said, I'm looking for my backpack. He said, have you seen my backpack? And she you know, shuts the door. We have three little kids at home, so she's kind of freaking out. Uh, she went and called the sheriff, they came out. Um, but uh, now they're leaving backpacks out. They were on Washington, they kind of stopped. Do you remember this, Sergeant Underwood? There was backpacks out. Uh, um, my neighbor called one, they came and picked one up, opened it up, said, yeah, there's a needle in here, zipped it up and took it away. But uh, they eventually came back looking for it. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, it's knocking on our doors. It's no. knocking on our doors. It's a little unsettling. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so if, what you do? If there's we, something we, we could do, it would be great. To, uh, we have people we know who to look out for, and we, we call yeah. whenever we see them. Uh, I don't think it's a secret. Right across the street is a... Uh, I mean, you have to have a multi-level approach. You have to drive the bad guys out of your town so you keep the sellers away uh, with community, you know, policing. You know, sort of you would be able to address that, but you've got to drive the bad guys out of town and you have to pay your schools so that the young kids coming through have a really high awareness so that they stay away from it and don't want to wrong and lure in, lure into the bad guys. But then you've got to reach the people that are suffering, mm -hmm. that are the ones that are, you know, being taken away in the, in the ambulances or, you know, unfortunately in the body bags. And the, and the trouble is the county does not have enough beds. We do not have enough adequate um, 
rehab centers, facilities, facilities you know, to, to, for the epidemic. Uh, I guess I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it an epidemic. I got the gal. Or jail space. Yeah. 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 You can, you but we got jail space, but jail space. Yeah, jail space. Yeah. 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 Mr. Mayor, God, well, if I can, um, I, I think in a situation like this, you know, how do we attack it? I, I, I see it all the time. Cops are patrolling the streets, and I see them running on foot all the time. I mean, they're they're getting the, they're getting the people that they need to get. Uh, the problem is that they're back out on the streets. You know, my biggest concern is, you know, I lost, you know, a friend, and uh, you know, a couple, you know, a week ago, and it, it hurt. And he wasn't a bad guy. He just got hooked. And it's one of those things. You know, how how do we stop that? And in a small town, you ask, you know, how do we stop that? And uh, I think you, we got to show compassion somehow. If you see somebody on the side of the road, you you follow up on them. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you make the call, get their name, get their number, get their address, send a card, send a note to what church they can go to, give them the name of the pastor. You know, we have to follow up. You know, this is our town, and you know, we can't control what people do, but we can give them out and let them know that they're not on their own. And. Uh, it's kind of funny you mentioned, not funny, but when you mentioned 9-11, you know, people did come together. You know, no matter all different walks of life, they came together and rallied. You know, this is our town. we got to come together. You know, we can't be, you know, well, well I hope they all die and blah, blah, blah. It's, it might be one of your friends. It might be your kid. It might be your mom. It might be your aunt. It might be your grandma. You know, we have to come up with some kind of system, support system. And, you know, we are blessed to have so many uh, veteran pastors in our area. And I think uh, maybe we start utilizing them. I know at least the ones that I know, which is for sure all of them, it would be all, all and willing to help out. And uh, I think uh, hopefully people speak up and if any ideas, it's not going to be a bad one. Yeah. Well, it might be worth organizing a subcommittee over because it's going to take But I keep looking at these numbers mm -hmm. and they're not, I mean, they're consistent. I, I've been monitoring them sure. for a while. And I'm, I'm sad to see that they're consistent. Okay, Ethan. I actually had talked to this about the subject with Randy maybe what two weeks ago and I talked with the sheriff about it. Washington Courthouse, Miamisburg, and a bunch of these municipalities are now charging them for I forget exact inducing panic was what what it was. And uh, a lot of these cities have now added these clauses in that if you go, which I know would drive up our legal bills and I went okay. Uh, charging the people who overdose with inducing panic. And this is actually like a widespread popular thing now. Miamisburg is doing it, Washington Courthouse, Circleville, uh, uh, Asheville, City of Columbus, small towns, large towns, doesn't really matter. It, 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 there's plenty of articles I can send you if you want to read over it. Because what happens is when they charge them, they have a man, you can either accept. Forces them into treatment. It first, yeah, it literally says, you, we will drop the charge if you willingly commit yourself to a rehab center and or you're going to spend some nights in jail. Now, I know that would cost the city a little bit of money if we charge them underneath our code, obviously, because we have to pay for the jail stay. And I think that's something we should do, or especially look at, maybe, maybe not do, maybe just talk about it, have a discussion. I mean, I can tell by your face you're probably opposed to that, but I think we need to have the discussion. Well, they can't immediately, I mean, they can't immediately go to jail. Yeah, well, it would be, they have 25 days to check in, I believe it was, in Washington Courthouse to either uh, check into a rehab center or they, they get charged. And I mean, I think it's something we need to look at or at least have a discussion about. And they would immediately go to the hospital. Well, well no, that, that already happened naturally. But they go to the hospital, they get to the hospital, they sign themselves out, you know, they're like, oh, well, I'm good. Sign out and get out and go over us again. The chief, I think it's a chief has something. Power over yes. The chief has got something. I think the judge, I think you would have to have, you would have to have a court that would be amenable to that charge. Um, I'll just, I'll just say that you would have to, in order, in order for that to work. I understand the thinking behind it, but in order for that to work, you would have to have a court to be amenable to that. Yeah. Does Clark County Court do that? So we'd be the first in Clark County. We'd be the first in Clark County, but you know, we're the first for smoking, 
signs were the first for uh, passing a police levy, so why not look at it again? So the question would probably become: What people centers are you going to force them into? Well, they would have made it to willingly. They have to willingly commit themselves or spend maybe a night or two in the county jail. But a night, night or two, Springfield is not. It's mostly south, like South Montgomery County, Appalachia, where it's really hard hit. But is the problem the is, doing it? Uh, cities are. In no, those Clark County. Clark County is not. I talked to the. I talked to Andy. From my understanding, they are not. From what the sheriff has told me, because uh, I spoke with her. I also spoke with the county prosecutor. He said this is something. I mean, Chief Trustee, you want to take this up? Because you definitely jump at the bit here. You're like, hey, like I used to be in elementary. elementary. The law, and with uh, Washington Courthouse was the first ones to start going in. The person has to be a known drug drug user. It has to be their second OD that, that's recorded. Yeah. And that is the only time that they can charge them with it. And it's. It, look, Sergeant was said it several times. What we need is education, yeah. mm -hmm. education of the schools, education right. of the young people. I agree, but um, we can't. Unfortunately, we can't fund that education. So right, true, <laughs> but, the, but the inducing panic charge is like I said. It has to be a second time OD. Yeah, and it has to be. They have to know that that person okay. This is your second time. Well, how many people have we got in? On a Friday, and then pick up again on a Wednesday or the following Friday. We, yeah, we do. We, we, we have our, we we have pretty quick. In the city, that as soon as we get there, we, we know them by first name basis. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And hands are tight. Deputy's hands are tight. Our hands are tight. Uh, Micro goes out and shoots 10 loads of Narcan into a patient. They revive. They can sign a refusal and not go to the hospital. Yeah. And then I talk with the prosecutor about it, and he's on his uh, on his own thing of pushing for. Just committing them to the hospital and denying them their right to leave is what the prosecutor is wanting to do, essentially. And he's trying to work with some of the judges about it because he's like, his example was if someone went into a hospital and they're going to kill themselves, uh, you wouldn't let them out. You would, they'd be forced, they'd be uh, involuntarily committed to the hospital. So they're trying to do that's his plan, but while he works on that, I figured we should start having a conversation about how to address it. I mean, it's happening. Hold them. However long it takes to get clean was kind of what Andy had well, uh, said. But because you can, you can, if someone's threatening to hurt themselves, you can put them under a 72-hour hold. Yeah, he was something talking about that, and then after that hold, sending them up to a rehab center somewhere. That was just kind of his thought process on it. But of course, you have to get, he's still working on that in his aspect. So while he's working, I figured, well, we should give it a shot. Because I had spoke to you about it, and then had a meeting with him. I had a, uh, a meeting, phone call with him, and then had a meeting with the sheriff. So. Okay. Sergeant, you had something? Yeah, actually, I have a couple things that's very disappointing. Our prosecutor right now in the county um, handles each drug case on an individual basis. If those people say they want help, more than likely we're not going to charge them. So you give them an arc in, they stand up and say, I need help. Um, you're probably looking at, at uh, no charges on them. Now, we're not the only place right now in Ohio. Ohio is one of the breeding grounds for the drugs coming in here. And we have not worked a good solution out any place. It is so much of it that it would it pretty much would bankrupt us. Now, you're talking about Narcan, but you're talking about thousands of dollars in drugs. We have kids basically living by themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a nation program, nationwide program. And, and sir, you said something about our churches. I don't know of one church in Clark County that will give you a donation for someone because we look at night. I work the, the whole world, all of Clark County, from time to time. And if we have someone come in town that is hungry or needs a place to stay, we have a hell of a time trying to find them. Most of the time, our deputies give them five, ten bucks, give them a sandwich, and move them on. That's what we normally do. Because it is so vast, so much of it, that people are tired. They're tired of seeing, giving the same guy $50 tonight, $50 the next night. If you go down to our soup kitchen right now, there is a limited number of housing for homeless people. 
there's women down there that have small children that are homeless. And they stand in line every morning to walk in and get a place to stay that night, and more than likely they're going to be turned down. It is a huge problem. I would love, not just us, but I would, I would love to get together and, and actually try to work something out. And, and you kind of make education. I don't know what else I can do right now. It is such a problem for us, for you. It, it has advanced much more than you think it has. And monetary-wise, I don't know if anyone can afford it. Yeah. Now, I do know I had a friend that had a daughter in the 90s, okay, was hooked on some drugs, and it was more than marijuana, but I can't remember what it was. She went to a drug rehab program in Chicago two times, and in the 90s it was $30,000 a month. Mm -hmm. I, could, I couldn't even begin to tell you what it costs now. And getting an insurance company to follow through on it is going to be next to impossible. So we do the best we can with what we have. I think we have to agree that those people who need help, we can't play godlike. We can't say, well, I'm only going to give you two doses of Narcan, and that's all we're going to give them. And, and I know you, so I'll give you three doses. Uh, you have to save that person's life. That's what we're committed to. If it takes 30 shots of Narcan, and, and we're going to try to get a hold of 30 shots of Narcan. Yeah. Knowing that as we turn around tomorrow night, we're probably going to be sitting there next. Yeah. We have a local, and I'm just going to say Chester, we have a local that at least once a week we take in to mental health. The last time we took him into mental health, the deputies almost had to fight the staff to get him to stay. In fact, they just turned around and left because it's so it's so frequent with this person. So we have terrible problems. Every hospital knows you by, by name. <laughs> I don't think we're going to arrest our way out of this by any stretch of the imagination. It's just not possible. I agree with education. I mean, in the 80s, you had senators and members of Congress who set up the D.A.R.E. program for prevention. And then, statistically speaking, at least from what you read, they say that it didn't work. So in 2002, they changed it up to this new pro It's still part of D.A.R.E., but it's, hey, it's safety. It's, it's something, something, something app. Numbers. And now, it's, now numbers are showing that it's trending to be more educational-driven and more and affecting people. I mean, I think until Congress gets their act together, Maybe we never. Uh, we have to handle it here. I mean, it's going to be a homegrown problem until the feds want to actually talk about it. I mean, how many people last year when you heard people running for federal offices talk about the drug epidemic? Nobody. Uh, it, I think I heard one TV ad for it, and that was for Rob Portman, and that was it. But and I, and I went to 12 states last year, and there were multiple weeks at a time, and I had not seen a single person talk about it. And I've read, I read 12 papers a day. And we used to be funded. I used to have. Three DARE officers funded on the grant for mental health. Just because the state said you have to prove it works, we lost that grant. You can't prove yeah. education works, prevention works. But you know what you can prove? You can prove if treatment works or not. They may take it three times, and there's like 30 beds. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I'm not trying to discourage you. I'm just trying to tell you how bad the problem really is. Oh, yeah. And we have two deputies out here tonight have just dealt with it. We need a drug court. We're one of the few counties that don't have it. it what we need to do it works in Hawking County. Uh, I've been to their graduations and I work representative hood. It works if it can work in Appalachia, it can work up here. Mm -hmm. well, you said a point I never thought about that. You are correct. I never once heard any candidate talk about the drug problem in this class. Well, it remember it's everybody else's problem. It's yeah. not it's oh it's not a national issue, they keep trying to play it down, but it's an epidemic. I mean there was a story on ABC that declared Montgomery County the capital of the heroin trade. Oh my God. So, okay. Like right now, there's a lot of things out there, like you're saying, like the sergeant said, as far as education, as far as trying to get the addicts help. You know, I've even been approached with uh, what they call dirty needle cleaning or exchange, uh, which I'm not a, I'm not no, a fan I'm not. of at all. No. Uh, but I know some place. The, the problem, like, like so said, it, it's it's more widespread and more growing every day than what, what anybody realizes. Oh, yeah. Our drug bags last year carried four rounds of Narcan. That was it. They updated our, our uh, drug bags. Now we carry eight. <laughs> yeah. 
Jackson Super. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
did purchase one first aid kit. And uh, we have some more items that we're looking at. And honestly, after the end of this month, we should look pretty good. We should be up to where we should have been 10 years ago. Um, on June 5th, Deputy J.T. Shaw was sent to New Carlisle Police Division to re replace Deputy Allender. Deputy Allender is taking a leave of absence and will return by the end of the year. Deputy Shaw is a solid, great young man and will work hard to keep us safe. When I mean solid, I mean solid. Is that the guy with the arms? That's the guy with the arms. Okay. Yeah. 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 One of the yeah. He's yeah. got a pack. He's got a <laughs> and he, <laughs> he has a great personality. Super cute. Yeah. Sheriff Burge is working hard to clean up our county uh, from drugs and drug abuse and make a safe place for all of us to live. And I can, I can vouch for that. She really is trying to do what she can. If you suspect a drug problem or any other type of criminal activity, Clark County, call the Clark County Sheriff's Department at it's 937-328-2560. And remember, uh, you can stop one of your own deputies in New Carlisle for work to report a problem or just to give them information. Um, we, they check things all the time. And again, the New Carlisle deputies and I want to thank everyone for passing the police levy. That was essential. For that, that's my report. And I think I've answered your questions, but I'm game again. <laughs> Anybody have some questions for something? <laughs> I, I, I have one. Bikes. Are, I, usually they come on over at the garden community garden and I see them, you know, circling around, you know, but um, are they, you know, are they on their bikes now? I mean, the, the, the they have not been on the bikes a lot. We have two certified bike people. One of them is Deputy Allen and she cannot be on a bicycle right now. The other one is Deputy Cruz and she has been doing uh, field training for the new deputy coming up. Mm -hmm. So you will see some of that uh, in the future. But, uh, that's exactly why we have to see a lot of them. She has been out on her bike. Uh, it's been late, she's been on the bike that day. Uh, uh, but it's not like it was last year when she was on that personnel right now. So the bike path is not being patrolled? Is that what? No, it's being patrolled. No, they're taking their cars down the bike path. They're taking the cars down? Our third shift guy can tell you everything that's going on in that bike path. He is great. I love him. Caesar Gonzalez. Caesar is doing a wonderful job up here. He, third shift guys are low key. He calls them when something's going on in the morning. Uh, and in fact, we have a building that we need to put a board up because kids keep crawling in and out the window. Um, and I'll be talking uh, to how he gets back about that. But uh, we really have a good staff right now. Bicycles, they will be out. Uh, and it's probably going to be another week. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you, Sergeant. <clears throat> Thank you, Sergeant Underwood. Uh, moving on with the city manager report under informational items. Uh, Camp Get Up and Go is June 26th to June 30th, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. right here at Smith Park. Uh, various outdoor activities, uh, crafts, and uh, this year's focus on fitness and, and nutrition. Leading up to that is the phone frenzy, and that is scheduled for Friday, June 30th. And that is also right here at Smith Park. And that's Similar event to this last year, it was a fantastic turnout, so it's always fun to come and get bummed up. Kids loved it, adults can join it too. Uh, we do need a council work session. Uh, we are looking to move forward uh, with doing online water payments, um, but we will require us to get together with council and maybe some citizens that want to come and discuss the steps that we need to do. We will have to change the code and then we'll have to talk about imposing a uh, fee for the time I swipe the card. Um, my recommendation is probably wait and schedule that because we have. Mike. Yeah, I mean, that's contact you know, it is it important to do it right away or I can send out emails okay. and find out when everybody has availability. Okay, that'd be great. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Not the twenty eighth to the thirtieth. <laughs> Not the twenty eighth. You know, cut out the car. Oh, yeah. Or the night of the phone. Oh, I'll take my nephews to go the phone. Not me. Nash I'll be running them through it though. We'll do it on Friday the thirtieth. Music series Sunday, June 25th. Uh, this uh, concert is going to be put on by the Sauerkraut German Band. It starts at 6 30 p.m. And of course, right down here at Smith Park, that's the stage that we have. Uh, good news, City Bobby Financing. Uh, we will be completing uh, the final documents on Wednesday, uh, June 21st. 
the city will save an additional $116,163.26 on our Twin Creeks infrastructure improvement bonds and also our series of 2010 various purpose bonds. Uh, we'll have more detailed information uh, to come after the Wednesday meeting. So that is always a good thing when we refinance and save some money. Uh, it is a lot of money. A couple of that was a 255 we got from the lawsuit, so we're looking at 371163 dollars plus the interest off the 255 account which we go that way. So we've done a fantastic job of reducing the debt. Uh, didn't go as quickly as I would like. It definitely didn't take off as much as I would like. It's always a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, so hats off to the administration, hats off to the council. Um, working together, this is what we achieve, and that is reducing our debt. I do believe that is all I have for the mm -hmm. city manager's report, so I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Any other questions? No. no? Wow. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Sure. Okay. Are we coming to comments from members of the public? Um, five minutes. Would you allow? Nobody? No tickers. Tick, tickers. tick, tick. tick. Right. Going, going, gone. All right. Okay. Here we go. Um, no committee reports tonight. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Mr. Acting Mayor. Yeah. Uh, I move to suspend the local council so that we can approve uh, resolution 17 12R. Actually, I have to the agenda for approval action tonight. And just so everyone knows, uh, I was working with Spring Build on this last week. Um, I did not get the final contract until today. I think I'm looking for And Bill's second. Not everybody wants no more comments. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any comments? Any? Mr. Light. Yes. Mr. Lethley. Yes. Sir. Vice Mayor Kerbach. Yes. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Motion to spend the rules passed five to zero. <laughs> Not the resolution section with your hand. Yeah, we'll read that. Resolution 17 11R introduction public hearing in action tonight. A resolution adding Vicki L. Taylor as an authorized signatory on all financial accounts of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Mr. Mayor. Acting Mayor? Yes. Moved to adopt Resolution 17 11R. Second. Lord. Is that Mr. Lindsay on the side? Yes. Yeah, yeah, second. 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 Motion. Just yes. second. 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 Uh, explanation of this resolution. Um, we had Ms. Amy Garman go with uh, to another employment, so we need to actually put a signatory in her place. Um, and this will allow our current tax administrator, Vicki Taylor, who is also a member of management, to take Amy's signature place. Okay. Any questions Very on the signature process? I'd be happy to uh, answer them for you. We've been there. Yep. Okay. Can I vote on this? Why? Uh, yeah, because it encompasses more than one. Okay. I, I, mean, I don't. I don't see a conflict of interest. Do you think? What would be the conflict? No, what's the conflict yeah. signs are? He has. He has no conflict in this because he's not part of the city administration. Right. 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 Yeah. Even though it may or may not be with where he's employed at, right. I see no conflict with him voting on this. Okay. His name is not in this ordinance. Okay. There is no. He works at. He works at the bank. He's quite a president. Yeah, he's not signing the checks. He just authorizes Vicky to sign checks. Yeah, that's all he's doing. It's like, it's all it's not like he's authorizing his family member or no. anything like that. I don't know. I don't see he's not authorizing himself. Thank you for yes. taking that. Yeah, good question. Well, ready? Yeah. Mr. Lighty. Yes. Mr. Lethley. Yes. Vice Mayor Craver. Yes. Walker. Whatever. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Like so, who's Mr. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. <laughs> Resolution 1711R passes 5 to 0. 
Resolution 17-12R, a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with the city of Springfield, Ohio, for the purpose of continuing to, pro to provide dispatching services to the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Mr. Mayor. I have Mr. I move to Left. accept resolution 17-12R. Second. Second. There you go. Give us a second. Give us a second. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. yes. Okay. Give us a second. 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 Thank you for breaking the rules of council putting this in here. Uh, we have historically had one of the city of Springfield for a fire and EMS dispatching. Uh, they did increase the cost 3% this year, but they have failed to increase it, I think, for the past three see a slight increase. However, um, we do have it out. Um, when we get all our marks on, we're going to look at switching over to Clark County dispatching, <coughs> for dispatching. Um, so we'll probably just have to look at our 60 or 90 notes we have this one to, to switch over with the county at that time. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Okay. Uh, I have a quick question for you. In here it says, whereas the city of Springfield has performed dispatch dispatching services for the citizens of New Carlisle with improved services and reduced costs. But you just said there was a uh, increase. So my question is, what's the reduced cost? Was this a was this uh, from an, from the older one? It was a same copy base. I mean, it, it, it did go up three percent. We can amend it, right? Right here to the Board of Council. I mean, I mean, there's more than one way to look at that. That can be that can be yeah. Uh, overall, it could be it could be. I mean, it could be taken in different ways. It could be taken literally in this context, like you see a three percent decrease. But then you can probably argue since 2007, has he done it at a reduced cost? I get what you're saying. Yeah. I just want to make sure if he passed that speed on. Here's the real question. In 2007, when you switched over, was it more expensive and you went with them because it was reduced cost? I was in here in 2007. Well, I was it was because years we, old. we used to take Clark County and, and then we would switch over to Springfield. It was reduced cost. That's why I knew yes. that, that was cut. Yeah. The, yeah. the point of the ordinance is, or the, uh, the point of the ordinance is that the city not having to provide the services itself, it's not having to provide uh, the dispatch equipment itself. So the services do contract that's a better reduced cost. All right, I just thought I was kind of maybe not deceiving isn't the best word, but it wasn't. I was like, wait, where's the reduced cost? Because it was going up. But I see where you're, you're coming from. So. We don't. All right, sounds good. Mr. That's my only. Bill. Mr. Drew, do you have the figure on how much that three percent increase was? Uh, I think it goes up to. $2,052.96. No, so right okay. okay. right, thank you. Sure. Mm -hmm. I knew I saw the number somewhere or something like that. I have a second paragraph. Mr. Mayor, so do, does that not come into play with the fourth paragraph, whereas the cost of contract will not increase from last year? When in fact, it has. <laughs> no, you're right. So maybe we need to strike that. Yeah, we can strike that. So how do we amend that? We can just, just take it out, remove it. Oh, I don't know. How well, we, we would just never make a motion to, 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 to amend the fourth. And that was if my want to do it properly, properly. Okay. So, Mr. Mayor, I move to amend the uh, resolution by striking out, whereas the cost of the contract will not increase from last year. Second. Second. Hang on a minute. And again, Council, I will take full responsibility for that. Of course. That's all right. I was just like, well, I was like, <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. Who made that second will. again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we, we're going to, we need to vote on the amendment first. Amendment first, yes. Okay. yes. Does everybody understand? No, you're, you're voting on the resolution as amended. Yeah, yeah. we could do that. Yeah. You would vote on the resolution as amended. So we, basically what we're doing is taking that, that just take entire it out line out of that. Yes. Yeah. Out of the resolution. And then we would vote. We're voting as amended. Mr. Light, yes. Yes. No, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Are you voting for the amended or are you actually voting for We're the voting as amended, 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 amended first, so we don't have to back and vote. Yeah. Uh, Let me start over again. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Light. Yes. Mr. Lethley. Yes. Vice Mayor Craybock. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Okay, the amendment passes 5 to 0. Now we're back to the original motion. 
No, we voted on the resolution. As amended. As amended. As amended. As amended. We voted on the resolution as amended. Yeah, that's what we did. Just in case we want to be, if we want to. We made a motion, you had a discussion, then another motion was made. Okay, we did. So what's the we voted on the amendment. Yeah, you voted on the amendment. Okay. Now we need to go back and pass the resolution. You are correct. Either way, it's the same. That's right. I don't think the votes are tied to this point. You raised more time than the I'm going to vote no. Now we're voting on passing 1712R. Mr. Lethley. Yes. I don't know. Can I, can I uh, think about an answer? It? It's got to be yes or no. Okay, or I'll stay. say yes then. Okay. Mr. Rennes. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Lindsay. Yes. I'm not even going to look at you. Mr. Lighty. Yes. <laughs> Resolution 1712R passes 5 to 0. Fair. And it will be amended. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I've got a question for Mr. Conner. Okay, hold on. You won't do that, but that's worse. What would what, 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 how did I end up with two of those when the sun can go? Here it is, bro. Here it is, here it is. Technical difficulty. Let's go to commercial. Can we go to commercial? We'll be right back. That's all me. As confused as you was on the motions we just did, how confused would you have been if we had all voted no on the second motion? <laughs> it's a rhetorical It should have just been normal. <laughs> Especially if you and I voted no, yes. Are you serious? It would have just been normal. We know that. I meant all of us vote no. I thought it was funny. I'm not sure he would. <laughs> we had 24 hours to rescind votes. I think he would find something. <laughs> Somebody would. Speak. The next three ordinances are just introductions this evening, so I'll read through those. Ordinance 17-20, introduction to ninth public hearing in action on July 3rd, 2017. An ordinance adopting the tax budget for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2018, and submitting the same to the auditor of Clark County, Ohio. Ordinance 17-21, introduction to ninth public hearing in action on July 3rd, 2017, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a memorandum of understanding for donated marks radios, marks radio units for the New Carlisle Police Division. Ordinance 17-22, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on July 3rd, 2017, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a memorandum of understanding for donated <coughs> marks radio units. Other business? Other business. Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. to 2 p.m. Coming up here this Saturday is the community garage sale. Uh, it will be all day, all of the city. The rain out day will be July 1st. The city offices would be closed Tuesday, July 4th, uh, actually for 4th of July. Also, uh, Farmer's Market starts this next, this coming Saturday too, from 9 to 1. Mr. Mayor, can I add to that if you don't mind? Yes. 
Sure, I interrupt you. Um, also with the farmers market, they actually have a fantastic event called Welcome to Wellville. We did it last year for the first time. It was a super hero thing, close on Sinister Street. We walked around town. We're not closing any streets, however. What they've done a fantastic job of doing is getting more vendors here that are health oriented than last year. Um, so please, citizens, come out. of council members Mike Lowry and Rick Lowry. Second. Thank you. Thank you very much. We forgot you for two months on accident. <laughs> 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 Vice Mayor Craig Walker? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Ludley? Yes. Uh, Mayor Lowry and Councilmember Rick Lowry are excused five to zero. Okay, I just also want to announce uh, that um, Second Harvest Food Mobile um, Truck is at the New Carlisle Elementary every Thursday at 10 o'clock. Um, they're going to call it the Super Pack and Super, super Power Pack. That's you know, one side is for kids' foods, the other side is for the what they call the grown up food, whatever that means. But anyway, um, all you have to do is live in New Clark, uh, in the Clark County area. Mr. Mayor, he's a time to be adjourned.